Hey guys, I wanted to try to tackle a question one of my viewers asked on one of my Photoshop PC build videos. And the question was an intelligent one. It was whether he should go for extra RAM or whether he should go for an SSD. And it's the kind of question that you come up with when, when you're trying to build a PC for a program like Photoshop. So I thought I would tackle the question both from a general point of view and also from a more specific, specific Photoshop view. So first of all, we're looking at a motherboard here and I just wanted to discuss the difference between uh, a RAM stick and an NVMe drive. So the NVMe drive would usually be an M.2 drive. It would go down here and it's basically used for permanent storage. They can transfer data at a hell of a rate. On, on this motherboard, the CPU would be here and you've got four lanes for the RAM. The RAM sticks that could be placed here could be, let's say, four sticks of 32 gigs, and that would give us 128 gigs in total. Yeah, that's right. And that would cost about $500. Last year, they would have cost about $1,000. The M.2 drive, and here we've got space for three of them. They could be up to a couple of terabytes. And let's say we had one here that was 128 gigs, the same as the capacity for the RAM. A 128 gig M.2 drive would cost around $40. So there'll be a 12 to one cost disadvantage in getting RAM. And if we look at the performance of the M.2 drive, these things are advertised as being very, very quick. You might start to think, well, maybe the performance of the M.2 drive is so good that you could replace some RAM with an M.2 drive. Now, M.2 drives are a little bit faster, well, quite a lot faster than other SSD drives, uh, but they're a lot, lot faster than hard drives. Let's take a look at this graph here and you'll see what I mean. So here we can see the data throughput for different types of memory. RAM has the fastest throughput, followed by NVMe and a long way behind is the hard drive. But if you look at the difference between an NVMe uh, stick and a RAM stick, it's not that huge. And it certainly doesn't seem to justify the 12 times cost for RAM for every gigabyte. So what else is happening behind the scenes to justify the extra cost of RAM? So one thing that could justify that extra cost is the fact that RAM generally comes with a lifetime warranty, whilst NVMe sticks, I've got a, a Samsung 970 stick and that one has maybe a three to five year warranty but the RAM sticks I buy usually I will make sure that they have a lifetime warranty. One other thing that we need to take into account however is what I would call the response time and the differences in response time between RAM, NVMe and hard drives is so huge I couldn't possibly show it on a graph like this. So we're going to have to use an analogy. So Probably the best analogy is pretending that we had a data center. So if I wanted to phone the RAM data center, they could start sending me data as soon as they've answered the phone. And for a RAM stick, the delay in them answering a phone would be about five seconds. The equivalent delay for an NVMe drive would be about 30 minutes. And when it comes to the hard drive, those guys will be taking about one to two weeks to answer the phone. That's even before they start sending any data to me. So that is really the key difference between the different types of storage is what they call the latency or the response time. The thing is with CPUs, they have such a fast performance that they need something equally fast to keep them fully occupied. So if you're buying a CPU, you also need to have the RAM necessary to keep the CPU going. And if we bring this back to Photoshop, if you're running Photoshop and maybe doing something no more demanding than designing YouTube thumbnails, that's not going to take any more than about eight gigs of RAM. But if you are stitching together huge panoramas, maybe running into hundreds of megabytes, 
that's going to take maybe a lot more RAM. And in that situation, I would definitely try to get, let's say, 16 gigs of RAM. But one other thing to bear in mind is if you have a situation like I have, where you are recording audio or recording video onto your permanent storage, something like an NVMe drive will really make a huge amount of difference over a hard drive because the performance of an NVMe drive is so superior to a hard drive that you would probably have some recording sessions that would fail on a hard drive. Whereas with the NVMe drive, you can, I find that I can record two streams of audio. I can record video all onto the same NVMe drive. And for me, that, that that's a critical requirement. But for the most part, when it comes to Photoshop, I would say, to put it really simply, Photoshop loves RAM. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you found that useful. I will see you guys next time. Bye.